Hey everybody, it's Shelly from Metal Designs. I just wanted to show you um, a new video with the papers. I haven't done one in a while. I haven't felt like making anything with the whole pandemic thing happening. Um, our Etsy shop was crazy busy right up until March and then everything has kind of slowed down. So I finally uh, decided I should get my butt in here and, and uh, roll some papers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, the only sh part I'm not showing you in my video is the annealing. So we have taken our sterling silver, this is 22 gauge. Um, and we annealed it two times and we pickled it between annealings. So it's really, really milky and it's not very shiny. And that's how I know it's been nicely annealed. I'm just gonna line it up on my ruler. It's about four and a half inches long. I'm just gonna cut that in half so I can make some smaller pieces and do some extra textures. Back up. The thing I really like about, um, I'm gonna show you how I cut on my guillotine, Pepe guillotine shear. So this shear is just amazing. I line up my little dot at the cut mark. You can also set the back stop. There's a back stop on this that you can set to the right, the right distance. Um, I line it up, it's against this back bar and it's just a gentle pull with the handle and it pops and cuts perfectly every time. Now what's really nice about a guillotine shear is it doesn't curl your metal. Your metal stays nice and flat where a bench shear curls it and it gets all funny and weird and sometimes you have to hammer it and flatten it. Um, but the guillotine shear doesn't do that. And then we're on to my baby, my mill. This is the 130 flat Peppy Tools mill. I personally don't roll my own wire, so I don't need the combo mill. And I really like the flat mill because it gives you a ton of workspace. They do have a 160 mill, which is even bigger than this one. And I kind of wish I had it, but no, I got this one and this, this one does me fine. Um, we can order you a mill if you, you need one. You can always contact me directly and I can get you a price on one. Um, Pepe Tools, the mills are just fantastic. Their guillotine cutters are amazing and their disc cutters are, are just great. Um, so what I'm going to do. So squares is a new pattern. This is the, um, the, the texture and the depth that I got in the square pattern. That was the first sample that we did on our live video. Now I'm going to do a loopy. This is a brand new pattern. I've never... Um, I haven't played with these ones too much. We always do a test, but we tested it and then I haven't made anything. So what I do is I cut my paper to fit my metal so that there's a little bit of extra texture around the edge. That's just in case your metal shifts uh, when you're rolling. You don't want it to shift so that you um, wind up with a, a spot that doesn't have any texture. And I'm also using our colored craft foam. This craft foam, um, I don't know what to tell you. I, I buy it from one of my beading suppliers and it's really thick and dense. It's better than the stuff we've had on Etsy or that I bought off of um, Amazon, sorry. The Amazon stuff just doesn't work quite right, but this stuff is amazing. So what I do is I take my annealed metal. I have adjusted the mill so that the, the metal slides in my rollers all by itself and it makes these little scratch marks in the pickle. And because it does that, I know it's nice and tight. And once I add the paper and the foam, it's going to be the perfect thickness um, the perfect tightness for imprinting my metal. So I make a sandwich with laser paper, metal, and foam. And now I'm going to roll it nice and smooth and evenly through my mill. It's not really super hard to roll. I actually have a frozen right shoulder right now and I'm still able to roll this. So now it comes off. Grace, you're going to have to figure out how to uh, find a good... And here is that texture pops right out there. I am, now this paper, as you can see, it hasn't torn and it still looks like it's got some life in it. I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm just gonna tighten my mill just a tiny bit so I get it a little bit tighter for the next roll. And I'm gonna take that same piece of paper. I'm gonna line up my second piece of silver, a new piece of foam. And I'm going to feed it into my mill, nice and smooth and slow. Yeah, it's a little firmer to roll this time, so that's good. The only reason you don't get good results with this paper is if your mill isn't tight enough and your metal's not annealed. Now this time you can see the, the foam got a little more squished than the first time. The paper started to tear a little bit and I've got an even deeper pattern into my metal that time. So that's perfect. All right, I'm gonna do one more. This one is called tree branches. It's kind of all these little branches and leaves. So I line up my metal, do a little snip. 
grab a piece of foam. And we sell the paper and the foam on both our website in Canadian dollars and on our Etsy page in US dollars, so whichever you're more comfortable with. We ship to the States using United States Postal Service, so the delays aren't affecting our uh, US orders the way Canada Post is. So now I take my, my paper, I put the metal on top, I make a sandwich with the foam, and then I smoothly roll it. And I just, by smoothly, I mean try to do an even pace. You don't want to put it really, really fast and you don't want to go super, super slow and you don't want to stop. Because if you stop on a really thick piece of metal, it can kind of indent it and make it weird. And voila, beautiful, deep texture. And here's what the paper looks like. So again, I could roll a second time on that paper, no problem and the foam is totally destroyed. The foam is super cheap, so like use it, throw it, don't worry about it. Um, you're, not, you're not losing any money by trying to reuse the same piece of foam. And I'm gonna do one more, because I'm really excited about this one. This is the graffiti. What a cool texture is that. It's just really random and graffiti-like. I did a photography class when I was in university and my winning, uh, my winning prize was doing graffiti in black and white. I got the top mark in the class. I was pretty proud. So I'm going to snip my foam. Make a sandwich. And nice and gently feed it in. Now it's pretty, it's stiff enough. If you're using an economy mill, you do really have to roll. You gotta find some muscle. Um, these have reducing gears, so they're not as hard to turn. And there you go, nice deep texture. And of course the texture bumps right out if you uh, patina it. If you add some patina, you get some really cool effects. All right, well thanks for watching. I hope that helps. See you at Metal Designs.